What if I told you that the feeling of being overwhelmed and having a sense of brain fog is completely normal and happens to us all? Yes, that's right. In today's fast paced world, achieving mental clarity and focus can seem like an impossible task. Mental clarity is not necessarily our default state. Most of the time, we allow our worries and different types of stress to affect our brain function and kind of prevent our minds from performing at an optimal level. In this video, I'm going to take you through three actionable ways you can level up your focus and have better mental clarity. Let's get right into it. First of all, and it might be an obvious one to a lot of you, but it's going to the gym or getting exercise. We all know the positive association between getting exercise and focus and clarity, so why aren't you doing it? I'd say the reason why a lot of people either don't go to the gym or don't exercise is simply because they can't get it into their routine. And there may be other factors in place, such as being able to afford a gym membership, which we'll talk about in a second, but when we're trying to incorporate this into our routine, first of all, you, if you want to do something, you need to make time for it. That goes for anything. You're not too busy, that's number one, and you just need to make time for the gym or for exercise. It doesn't have to be a two hour routine or going crazy like Sam Sulik on YouTube, but you need to kind of start factoring it into your calendar, factoring it into your day and make it a habit, whether that be going for a walk or going to the gym, lifting weights, doing some cardio in the gym, or even as I used to do when I was younger, home exercises. And that kind of brings me on to if you can't afford a gym, that's exactly what you can do. You can go for walks, you can go, if you have a bike, go cycling. You can do home workouts, sit-ups, push-ups, whatever. You don't need a fancy setup to get the benefits from exercise. So I'd highly recommend that you just get started and try and factor that in to your routine. If you are struggling with factoring it into your routine, I'd recommend just adding a block to your calendar. If you haven't got a calendar set up, I'd highly recommend you get a calendar and just, you'll be able to plan things far easier. Now, I'm no saint when it comes to using a calendar. I'm still getting into that right now. I just found very early on that it's quite beneficial. So I'm sharing that with you now so you can get a head start. So number two, and it's disconnecting. Now I've done a complete different video on this and you can check it out up here, but essentially that's how to set up your iPhone so it doesn't ruin your life. Similarly, what we want to do is disconnect ourselves from both distractions, but also things that are just kind of holding us back. So a lot of people, when you finish work, for example, you may have your work Slack, for example, or one of the team's messaging apps on your phone. You need to just cut off from that. So if you if you don't have the restraint to just not open it and mute the notifications, I'd recommend just deleting it from your phone entirely. And also simple things like when you go out for a drive, put your phone on do not disturb. Like even though you're listening to music and driving, you might see a notification pop in on your wee holder. I'd recommend turning that off so you just completely disconnect. You completely, you're just driving and there's no distractions. And I, I'm not talking like distractions where you're going to crash the car. I'm talking like subtly in the back of your head, you know, you just got a message. So you're thinking about that subconsciously. You might not even know you are but you are. So if you want to take anything from this, just put your phone on silent, okay? And another way you can disconnect is simply by going out into nature. And it links back to your exercising at the, at the very start of the video, where you can go out for a walk, for example, that counts as your exercise, but it also counts as you're disconnecting. You're going out into nature, you're kind of reconnecting, you're re-inspiring yourself almost. Often nowadays, we're so wrapped, we're nearly cocooned in technology that we don't get away from it often enough and we don't schedule time away from it. Or we schedule time away from our current technology with different technology. And what I mean by that is I might be sitting at my desk working on my Mac mini or doing work on my work laptop. And I'm going to disconnect from that by taking my phone or my iPad and going to a coffee shop. That's not really disconnecting. You're just doing a similar thing with a different piece of technology, if that makes sense. So what I'd recommend is go for your walk, go for your run, your cycle, whatever, and try and disconnect yourself from just technology in general. Now, feel free to have music on or whatever, but just make sure that like no one can get through to you on your phone. 90 99% of the time we think there's going to be some emergency that people need to get through to us. That's never, it's never really going to happen. So there's no point even worrying about that. Plus there is a feature on a lot of the focus modes where if the person rings three times in a row, they'll get through to you automatically. Just keep that in mind and really push yourself to disconnect. You'll feel the benefits yourself. There's a, there's a massive link between nature and positive mental outlook on society in general, but also on the creativity process and being creative. Going out in nature and similarly going out into a city can can inspire you to think up new ideas and stuff like that. So I'd highly recommend that. So the next one is reading. Now it's <laughs> even for myself, I, I don't know about you guys, but I love going into a bookshop and just looking around the place and buying books. Now what will happen with me is I'll buy 20 books over the course of a few months, whatever, and read none of them. So what I've actually 
tried to get into the habit of doing is starting to read those books naturally as you would expect rather than use them as like a decoration however if you don't already do this or you, you may have books lying around that you've been meaning to read or were bought for, bought for you the benefits on mental clarity and reading is insane now what would i recommend in terms of a book type to read so first and foremost any book type or newsletter or newspaper or article that you read is a form of reading if you're interested in it and it gets you reading choose that one don't take my word for what i like or whatever like that if you have something you might be into cars like i am for example you might like to read all the latest releases from top gear or whoever it may be now if you want actual books that are kind of worth reading i find that the kind of self-help genre is the best one the reason for that is first of all i i like to feel like i'm not wasting my time reading and you're never really wasting your time reading because you're always adding to your vocabulary you're always pushing yourself you're adding a new word you find a new word in the book and you look it up and then boom it's added to your vocab um however with self-help books and opposed to fiction for example you're learning practical advice that you can most likely implement in your life whereas with fiction it's just another form of watching tv you're just reading tv essentially now if it gets you reading that's the main thing so i'm not going to hate on people who read fiction or anything like that just read it and once you start to build that habit again i'll always reference back to the five minute rule with everything here where whether it be your gym disconnecting or reading five minute rule is key five minutes do an exercise maybe sit-ups maybe push-ups maybe just go for a five minute walk five minutes going to the gym whatever it may be right you have five minutes disconnecting so turn your phone off completely off for five minutes and just sit and do nothing. That can be the start of your five minutes of disconnecting. And then similarly with reading, five minutes of reading. Just say to yourself, you're gonna read for five minutes, read the first two, three pages, whatever, however long it takes you, and then see where it goes from there. More often than not, you're just gonna stick with it and keep going. That's the beauty of the five minute rule. It's just oftentimes getting over that initial hurdle. So that said, if you're interested in organizing your life, check out this video here. And if you're interested in the video I mentioned earlier on about setting up your iPhone so it doesn't ruin your life check it out here other than that i hope you have a great day and i'll see you in the next one bye bye